quite often I found myself on stages like this talking about 3D printing and sometimes I feel like a fraud because what I'm talking about essentially is likened to someone who printed a Microsoft Word document using a printer and paper. That's nothing. Really why we're here is because in nine years ago we started a foundation where a group of young professionals fresh out of school and we wanted to make an impact. We wanted to touch our communities like many young um, NGOs are doing today. But we wanted to do it differently. We wanted to impact people with less resources because, hey, we don't have money. We still don't have money. But then again, you know, we're looking at small problems that we could solve in our various communities. And from nine, year, from nine years ago till now, we've metamorphosed and we've joined hands with other NGOs like the WAFSLI, that's the Water for, Water for Sustainable Living Initiative, where we provide portable water for underserved communities. Foundations like Skills Outside School Foundation, where we mentor kids on the verge of crossing over between secondary school and university, being that we were actually professionals in the field, actually living their dreams, quote unquote. So every year we try to uh, do something, impact people, till in 2015 we stumbled on something extremely amazing. We stumbled on 3D printing. Now 3D printing was just a means to an end. As part of the Bring Back Our Girls group, we went to an IDP camp in Abaji. So there are a lot of people that ran away from the Northeast and we were a group of NGOs that went there and our plan for Cyberlogic Foundation was to uh, capture the bio data of students so that we could take them on, on our scholarship program. We were able to capture 50 students, and amongst them, one of them, a nine-year-old boy called Musa, had his hand amputated from the wrist up due to a fire incident at his grandmother's house. And there was a fire, he happened to be there. It was an accident. You know, his hands, was, his hands were badly burnt to the point that gangrene started to grow on them and they had to be chopped off. So here we are trying to, you know, provide scholarships to kids and just keep them in school because the purpose of having them in IDP camps is because we hope that they will go back home someday. So how do we keep them in class for those one to two years that they're in Abuja as refugees? We went home and we kept thinking, how do we help this little boy? You know, we were in 2015. There has to be an innovative, cost-effective way to give him back his motor skills that he so desires. Speaking with Musa, a very vibrant nine-year-old boy, with, you know, with, with the hope, you know, for the future. And we sort of asked him, so what are your experiences, you know, being, uh, having, facing this, this, this accident and living with it? And mostly he's like, in class, he's sort of the center of attention for the wrong reason, because he's sort of incomplete. Right? So we went online, how do we give this boy prosthetic limbs that are cost effective? And after a lot of research, we found, a, we found 3D printing and a group called Enabling the Future. Now these are, 3D printers. 3D printing has been here since the 1980s, and they are mainstream in, in really big industries like the aeronautics and the automobile industries. A lot of cars we drive today have 3D printed parts. A lot of planes we fly today have 3D printed parts. So, but 3D, print, 3D printing caught wildfire when they started making desk, desktop sized 3D printers, just like the HP printers we have at home today that can print, scan, and photocopy at the same time, and they're cheap and you know, they can give you what you're looking for, even though we have the bigger printers that are for mass production of, of stuff. So these are a couple of 3D printers, and the material we use to 3D print is called filament. Mostly they are thermoplastics, but they are 3D printed materials. You can 
3D print in different materials like wood, ceramic, uh, different alloys of metal, and so on. So we went online, we're looking for a solution to this unique problem. Our goal is we need to give Musa prosthetic limbs that are cost effective and they are functional so that he can go back to class, you know, and maybe even be cool. So we found a group of, of we found a community of engineers, doctors, 3D printing enthusiasts, and also disabled people in need of prosthetic, prosthetic devices. They came together collectively and individually, designed 3D models of prosthetic limbs and put them online for free, provided you do not use them for commercial gain which is, that's exactly what we're looking for, you know? So it was like the universe was answering our prayers. So enabling the future have two designs. They have uh, wrist-powered prosthetic limbs and elbow-powered prosthetic limbs. So people whose amputation is from the wrist up or from the elbow down, right? We have, so uh, enabling the future has 3D printed models online for free for them. So just like, just like downloading a template, a CV template uh, from online, and editing it till it becomes your CV. Like all you have to do is download, this, download these files and, um, and manipulate them and size them to the intended recipient. So, we're very excited. We went on Amazon. After much, much reviews, after much research and, and reading reviews, we found, we settled on the MakerBot 5th edition 3D printer. We ordered it and in three weeks it was here. In that time, we had soaked up everything about enabling, enable prosthetic limbs, how they work, how to assemble them, how to 3D print them, and how to fit them to the intended recipient. We had also taken Musa's measurements so that we can actually make his own prosthetic hands. So this is um, the first picture on the right is, is Musa, is Musa's hands, right? The right hand is the one that is amputated and we're using basic skills. What I'm trying to tell you people is that 3D printing is, is not rocket science. You know, it's, we, we were doing these things from, from no experience at all. Minus the fact that I'm from an IT background and a lot of us are engineers, like we watched YouTube videos and it was basically do it yourself. So we're using rulers, we're using scissors and we're using sellotape, just crude materials that we have in our homes. The second, object, the second picture on the right is the 3D model from Enabling the Future, which we just downloaded and put it on the file. So on that software, we size it and we send it to the printer. That's it. The, picture, the first picture on the bottom left is us printing the palm, and the bottom right is printing the fingers. So totally, it takes about 20 hours to print a prosthetic hand given that we're in Nigeria and Nepal would take light, you know, <laughs> and you have to have a system with generator, UPS, and maybe you take light, the gate man has to be running to go and turn it on, because if anything happens to, if, if the 3D printer loses power while printing, you have to change an extruder, and there's no technical support. You can't send the printer to America and get it back, you know, you have to you spend money. Like I said, money we don't have, right? So after 30 hours of printing, many mistakes made and lessons learned, we were able to 3D print uh, hands for Musa. So this was at Night Tech, I think two years ago. So this is Musa with his hand. You can see the smile on his face. So I think we have to watch this video again. We can see the smile on his face. He, he didn't believe what just happened. He just clenched his wrist, you know. <laughs> so we've we've gone on next slide. So we've gone on to make prosthetic limbs for other people in Lagos. Uh, this is a four-year-old girl. Her name is Success. She she wasn't amputated. This is how she was born. So I mean, the things she can do with her hands as they are, they are amazing, you know. But still, you know, she's incomplete. You know, she looks weird and she wants to be normal like everyone else. So we got her three prosthetic hands, one in pink, one in gray, and one in blue. <laughs> and success is in Lagos and she's a very bright kid with a very bright future. I see her, I see her in the arts, in the arts, arts line. We've also gone on to, so this is also show that, you know, it's also applicable to adults. So this is uh, Plankat, he's a, he's a pharmacist. 
very amazing fellow. He was once the uh, uh, student president of pharmacists in Nigeria, right? And this is him, you know, actually interacting with his 3D printed prosthetic hand. And the beauty of it is that it's functional. They have a grip and it uses no electricity. It's two string technology. You have a flexible string and you have a non-flexible string. These are old designs. We have new designs. So these are the new designs we're working on, right? As you can see, they're, they're more natural looking, right? They're less, you know, they're less conspicuous and they're, they don't use any screws. They're pretty much, everything is 3D printed. And it's amazing because in two short years, you know, the kind of leap, you know, in terms of knowledge, is amazing. Okay. So, what next? We've gone around, we've collected data of disabled people across Nigeria, about 200 of them. And what we've noticed is about 80% of them either need leg prosthesis or wheelchairs. And we know that with the 3D printing technology, we can manufacture these things easily. We're also um, designing for the African environment, you know, using natural African, using natural African colors and also looking at um, using African raw materials. So the material for 3D printing is called filament, usually thermoplastics. We can actually recycle these things. Plastic cups that we use at parties and plastic plates can be shredded and put in a funnel into an extruder and it comes out as filament. This is tested. So we can actually use, we can actually recycle our plastic and, may, and actually touch people's lives. We have also gotten requests from hospitals in Abuja to fabricate tubes that are hard to find, to fabricate tubes for their equipment that are hard to find. You know, this goes to show us, you know, that so many little things, there are so many applications that 3D printing could solve easily. All thanks to Musa, you know. And by the way, Musa has gone back to Borno now and he's back in school and it's amazing. The next project we were super excited about, super, super, super excited about, more than the prosthetic limbs, is the Braille. And that's because of the, the, the amount of people we can impact. If we put, so these are, these are Braille educational materials that we're using to teach kids, to teach kids mathematics and sciences, using 3D printed products like multiplication tables and periodic tables. So you put one piece in a class of 20, you can impact so many people and it's less stressful to make the, the prosthetic limb. So this is really amazing. We're super excited about this. The, the opportunities and, 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 and the amount of impact we can make, we're really excited. Let me just say that. In five years, 3D printing is going to be five times cheaper and 400 times faster. It took us 20 hours to print a normal prosthetic hand, right? It cost us about $5,000 to buy our makeup bot. It's going to be five times cheaper and 400 times faster. The applications, apart from the social good industry, we've seen it in manufacturing, there's also in housing. I hope to one day stand on a stage like this and tell you that we've built low-cost housing using Dangote cement and a couple of huge 3D printers. My prayer to all of us is that I want you to look into 3D printing for your different, for your different sectors and different industries, where, whether you're in agriculture or you're in education, look into 3D printing. There are applications of 3D printing that can definitely cut your cost, double your impact, and reduce your time to market. Thank you very much.